Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Before we begin today's stories, I want to first mention that I truly appreciate you all tuning in and listening to me. It means so much as I've been wanting to do this for quite some time. My aim is to improve the quality of the videos on this channel as I progress and I only wish to provide the most interesting content to you all. If you guys enjoy my videos or have story suggestions, please like and subscribe to my channel and comment below. I will always do my best to reply to each comment you have. Thank you so much for listening and now let's begin the video. Venice may seem like a glittering romantic city, but underneath the facade lies a darker, more sinister side. Venice has a long history of ghosts, curses, murders, and unexplained happenings. Join me as I take you on a tour of some of the most haunted places in Venice and the eerie tales associated with them. Before we begin, I want to note that viewer discretion is advised. Nestled within the charming district of Canareggio, stands the lone palace of the Casino degli Spiriti, which in Italian translates to Casino of the Spirits. Legend has it that the casino, during its most productive years, served as a meeting place for a cult orchestrating eerie meetings which appeared to be quite malevolent. Late at night, and under the cover of moonlight, witnesses have recounted sightings of hooded figures cloaked in mist carrying torches, marching towards the Casino degli Spiriti, strange sounds akin to twisted versions of haunting Gregorian chants reverberated across the lagoon during these mysterious processions. Another legend involves the tragic account of one of the more popular spectral inhabitants. Luzo, a 16th century painter, was accustomed to hanging out at the palace. He once rubbed shoulders with luminaries like Titian, Giorgione, and Sandalina within the walls of the casino. The venue also played host to gatherings of nobles, artists, and writers, often accompanied by prostitutes and untrustworthy people. Cecilia, a constant companion of Giorgione, caught the eye of Luzo, who harbored unrequited love for her. Luzo's obsession for Cecilia would unfortunately be his ultimate downfall. Cecilia's interest in Luzo was not reciprocated, and on one fateful night, fueled by drunkenness, Luzo, overwhelmed with despair, ascended to the top floor of the casino and took his own life. Legend has it that his tormented soul still roams the palace, eternally seeking the love that eluded him. This enigmatic palace also bears witness to blood-stained episodes. In the 1920s, the remains of several individuals were discovered within the palace. Strikingly, each of them was found without their heads and right hands. Another unfortunate account occurred shortly after the turmoil of World War II. Venice grappled with economic decline prompted citizens to turn to smuggling for sustenance. Linda Semetta, an Italian woman from Belluno, engaged in the illicit trade of cigarettes and became the envy of many. One ominous night, she vanished without a trace and eventually declared a murder victim after an extensive search by the authorities. Months later, as kids frolicked in the waters before the Casino Degli Spiriti, a wooden trunk adorned with shells and algae emerged in the distance. Expecting a treasure trove, their excitement turned to horror Upon discovering the lifeless body of Linda Semetta within, since that chilling revelation, no Venetian has dared to plunge into the waters near the Casino degli Spiriti, shrouding the place in an eerie silence. For half a millennium, the building, as intriguing as it is, seems to hold on to generations of secrets, many still hidden within its walls. Teatro La Finice Opera House has a long and ill-fated history ever since its opening in 1792. Considered one of the most famous opera houses in Europe, it quickly became a premier venue for Italian opera and saw the debut of many Rossini, Bellini, and Verde works. However, tragedy has stalked its gilded halls. La Finice has been devastated by several fires over the centuries. The first fire was in 1836 on the eve of its 44th season. Though rebuilt, calamity struck again in 1996 when an arsonist burned it to the ground. The theater, 
was rebuilt once again, and some say these repeated fires awaken dark forces that now haunt the theater through the ages. Teatro La Piniche has withstood the test of time, enduring fires and the scars of war. It is believed to house the spirits of countless artists, their souls finding solace within its grandeur. Legend has it that on one chilling night, a young artist embarked on a journey to capture the essence of a beautiful woman rumored to inhabit the theater. Unbeknownst to him, the vengeful spirit of a murdered opera singer, blamed for the recurring fires that plagued the venue, lingered there. As the artist approached, a bone-chilling feeling pervaded the air, which made the hair on the back of his neck stand up. Undeterred, he gazed through the windows, sensing a feeling of being watched. Curiosity compelled him to conduct an experiment. He placed a knife on the ground. He watched in disbelief as it moved as if guided by unseen hands. Panic set in as he realized he was alone, and suddenly, a disfigured person emerged, the very woman he sought to paint. Dressed in a translucent white gown, she revealed her tragic tale of murder by an obsessed admirer, her spirit forever bound to the theater, searching for both love and revenge. Terrified, the artist fled, never to return. Another story recounts the spectral presence of a composer who once graced the stage there. Legend has it that his spirit lingers, manifesting as subtle echoes of otherworldly music during quiet moments in the theater. Witnesses claim to have heard ghostly piano notes and ethereal melodies, evoking the spirit of the maestro himself. The inexplicable phenomena have left performers and staff with a mix of awe and trepidation as the unseen artist continues to serenade the opera house from beyond the veil. San Cervolo Island, shrouded in its dark past, morphed from a Benedictine monastery in the 8th century to a mental asylum in 1725, housing both men and women subjected to harsh and often ineffective treatments. Over 200,000 patients endured the trials of this institution, leaving behind echoes of their suffering. In 1978, the asylum closed its doors, evolving into the San Cervolo Insane Asylum Museum. This museum, a repository of history, showcases the evolution of mental health care and the institution itself, featuring medical equipment, patient files, and even an anatomical theater. The island has since become home to the prestigious Venice International University, focusing on social sciences, economics, and environmental studies, yet the specter of the past persists and numerous ghost stories and paranormal claims surround San Cervolo. Visitors have reported hearing disembodied whispers, moans, and cries, especially in the former patient wards and the anatomical theater. Some claim to have glimpsed shadowy figures roaming the halls or faces peering from windows. Visitors also have reported on multiple occasions the feeling of being watched, objects moving on their own, sudden cold spots, and unexplained electrical disturbances contribute to the island's reputation as one of the more haunted places in Italy. Late into the night, some witness accounts state that faint screams can be heard coming from the woman's wing, and the unmistakable scent of ether pervades sealed-off hospital rooms. Venice's island cemetery of San Michele, where centuries of Venetian nobles, merchants and paupers rest in eternal slumber. At first glance, it seems like a peaceful and final resting place with its marble tombs and ornate sculptures. But San Michele Cemetery has its own secrets. Nestled on the small island of San Michele in the Venetian Lagoon, this cemetery assumed its role in 1807, ushering in a new era that saw burials move from within the city due to concerns about hygiene and disease. The isolation of San Michele Island, coupled with the sheer number of individuals interred there, Estimates ranging from hundreds of thousands to millions has given rise to accounts of restless spirits that linger among the tombstones. Some have witnessed translucent apparitions meandering through the cemetery grounds, especially near the ossuary, bone house, and the church of San Michele Archangelo. These spectral figures, perhaps remnants of the departed, add an ethereal quality to the already sacred grounds. The cemetery seemingly frozen in time becomes a stage for the mysterious and the unexplained. On foggy nights, the atmosphere becomes particularly enchanting, as witnesses have seen eerie lights, flickering orbs, hover among the tombstones, creating a spectral light show that defies logical explanation. Delve deeper into the legends surrounding San Michele Cemetery and you may encounter the Red Shirt Ghost, 
a young soldier named Zali, who fought and perished in Garibaldi's red shirts movement. Sightings of his spectral form, clad in the distinctive red uniform, persisted until a statue in his honor was erected elsewhere in Venice. Yet perhaps one of the most haunting tales is that of the lost girl. When on a fog late on November night in 1904, a Vaporetto collided with a gondola claiming several lives. A young girl is said to haunt the waters around the island. Her spirit carried in a floating coffin illuminated by four flickering candles. Some locals insist they have seen the apparition of the girl around the waters and try to avoid the area at night. Lastly, let's delve into the haunting local legend of Palazzo Mastelli del Camello, a fascinating piece of Venetian history with a bizarre twist. Built in the 12th century, this palatial residence once belonged to three affluent brothers, Ryoba, Sandi, and Afani, renowned silk and spice merchants who had journeyed from the Peloponnese to Venice around 1112. Initially referred to as Mori, Moors, they later adopted the name Mastelli, immortalized in statues adorning the building. According to local lore, these statues on the palace's walls are not mere decorative carvings, but the petrified forms of Ryoba, Sandi, and Afani, and one unfortunate servant. The story unfolds with the brothers attempting to deceive a wealthy Venetian widow who had inherited a tailoring workshop in a scheme to sell their subpar fabric at an exorbitant price. Justice intervened when the widow prayed to curse the ill-gotten money. As the dishonest merchants touched the tainted coins, they were transformed into stone statues, frozen reminders that divine retribution awaits the unscrupulous. The camel carved in the palazzo's facade adds another layer to the narrative. Some believe it belonged to the brothers and suffered the same fate, while others assert a different origin. A wealthy Middle Eastern merchant, compelled to leave his homeland for Venice, purportedly had the camel crafted to serve as a recognizable symbol for the woman he loved, should she reconsider her decision not to marry him. In a curious turn of events, the statue lost its original stone nose in the 19th century, leading to a creative solution, a replacement crafted from iron. Local superstition advises against disturbing the statues or meeting their gaze, as it is believed to unleash a cascade of misfortune upon those who dare defy the spirits from within Palazzo Mastelli del Camello. As we wrap up the stories of Venice's haunted past, it's clear there are many sinister secrets hiding behind the romantic canals and opulent palaces here. Who knows what other restless spirits still lurk in the shadows of the city? If you found these stories interesting, make sure to comment below with your thoughts and share any haunting stories you may have heard or experienced. I'd love to read what you guys have to say. Please like and subscribe and hit the bell icon to receive notifications and stay tuned for any future videos. Until then, see you in the next one.